こんばんは。Good afternoon. My name is Genaro Saavedra and I'm with the 3D Imaging and Display Laboratory at the University of Valencia in Spain. First, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to give this talk, in particular to Professor Osamu Matoba. Arigato gozaimasu. It is our honor and my pleasure. In this talk, I'm going to present a part of the work developed by our research team in the light field microscopy area. In particular, I will focus on the so called Fourier light field microscopy. As an introduction, I would like to briefly explain the basic idea under light field imaging, which is also known as plan optic. Or integral imaging. This technique is originally based on geometrical optics, and each point in a given object seen is supposed to emit an isotropic cone of rays. If one wants to reconstruct the position of the different points in a 3D scene, a tracing back or back projection. Of all rays arriving to a given reference plane will do the work. But for doing this, the whole information about the impact position and the incidence angle of each ray has to be measured. The theoretical function including this information is called the planoptic function at the object reference plane, L. In this picture, all light field imaging systems aim to sample this function at the given plane as densely as possible. Here you can see a typical sketch of a conventional microscope with an infinite conjugate objective. The front focal plane of the microscope objective, considered here as the reference object plane, conjugates to the back focal plane of the tube lens, where the image sensor is located. Note that the information collected by this sensor is not suitable for 3D reconstruction of the 3D sample, since all angular information onto the reference object plane. Is summed up at each pixel of the sensor. Thus, no back projection is feasible and no 3D reconstruction is possible. Note that diffraction of light provides, in this case, a resolution limit onto the reference object plane of lambda over 2NA, lambda being the wavelength of the light emitted by the sample. And NA, the numerical aperture of the objective of the microscope. The first attempt to collect angular information in the object plane using a microscope was implemented by locating a micro lens array at the previous image plane in the so called light field microscope. The sensor is now displaced to the back focal plane of the micro lenses. Rays passing through the center of each micro lens are now collected by different pixels on the sensor, depending on their propagation direction at the image reference plane. Thus, both spatial and angular information are captured by the sensor. Ideally, the spatial sampling of the planoptic function is here related. With the pitch of the micro lens array. While the angular sampling is determined by the number of pixels of the sensor behind each micro lens. In this way, for a given micro lens array and sensor, the smaller the pitch of the array, the better the spatial sampling and the worse the angular sampling. It is worth to say here that the High spatial resolution is the most 
valuable feature of a microscope. Thus, in the spatial angular trade-off, a small array pitch is a must to preserve the resolution of the native microscope as much as possible. Note that the main assumption in light field imaging systems is that each pixel captures a single ray passing through the center of the corresponding microlens. This ray comes from the conjugated point of this center of the microlens onto the reference object plane. However, due to the wave nature of light, each sample point generates a spot onto the microlens with a finite radius m times the spatial resolution of the native microscope, m being the magnification of the microscope. Only when this radius is much smaller than the microlens diameter, or equivalently, the array pitch p, the light field imaging assumption is acceptable. As a rule of thumb, a radius of this spot is smaller than p over 5 is considered a practical condition for this imaging system, uh, regime. In this situation, resolution is then limited not by diffraction, but by 2p, that equals 2 mu times the spatial resolution of the native microscope, with mu bigger than 5. Summarizing, for a given native microscope, the smaller the pitch of the microlenses, the better the resolution of the light field microscope. However, diffraction effects prevent the use of really small microlenses. Is it possible to achieve good resolutions without having these undesirable diffraction effects in light field microscopy? The answer is yes, and we will share the solution in a while. Another important feature in 3D imaging is the depth of field. This parameter is defined as the extension of the axial interval around the reference object plane with transverse planes acceptably focused onto the sensor. It is easy to understand that only within this region a good enough 3D reconstruction can be performed. Elsewhere, reconstruction will lead to a blur render of the sample. An estimation of the depth of field in the light field microscope lead to this formula in which you can see that the depth of field in the light field microscope is 1 plus mu square over 2 times bigger than the depth of field of the native microscope. Since mu must be bigger than 5, clearly a light field microscope increases the depth of field respect to the native microscope more than 10 times. Here comes the solution. To overcome the conflict diffraction versus resolution, in light field microscopes, we use the so-called Fourier light field microscope architecture. In this case, the light field sampling is performed onto the aperture stop of the objective instead of the image plane of the reference object plane. It can be shown that the sample planoptic function now is a transposed version of the previous one. Exchanging the roles of the pitch of the microlens array and the number of pixels after each microlens. Thus, now the pitch relates with the angular resolution while the number of pixels per microlens relates with the spatial resolution. In this way, a small number of microlenses 
covering the aperture stop and then having relatively big diameters and suffering small diffraction effects produce a sampling equivalent to a small pitch onto the image plane, avoiding the above trade-off between diffraction and resolution in light field microscopes. Again, from a practical point of view, at least three microlenses along the aperture diameter are considered as a minimum number to provide an appropriate angular sampling. In Fourier light field microscopes, resolution is determined by Na over N, N being the number of microlenses within the aperture stop diameter. In this picture, for instance, N equals to 5. And uh, in that case, the resolution limit is multiplied by 5 respect to the native microscope. It is also simple to estimate the depth of field of the Fourier light field configuration as 5 times n squared over 4, the native uh, depth of field of the microscope. Okay, since typically the aperture stop plane of the objective is not easily accessible, a telecentric relay is used to obtain an image of that stop. The microlens array is then located onto this intermediate plane. In fact, a Fourier light field microscope can be easily implemented as an add-on on many already available microscopes. A complete microscope with an infinity corrected objective has a tube lens that focuses an intermediate image of the sample at its back focal plane. This focal plane coincides with the front focal plane of the eyepiece, both forming an, a focal relay. Thus, the eyepiece projects the image of the reference object plane to the infinity in such a way that the observer focused it onto its retina without the need of accommodation. The observer's eye, pupil, is located onto the image of the aperture stop through the telecentric system tube lens plus eyepiece. It is then easy to substitute now the observer's eye by a microlens array and reproduce the scheme of a Fourier light field microscope. In this way, we can take light field images from the eyepiece port with no further modification of the native microscope. To have a flavor of the performance of this novel configuration, we consider here a summary of the relevant parameters of the three configurations, namely conventional, light field, and Fourier light field microscopes. A detailed discussion of the derivation of them can be found on this reference by our group. We reproduce here the particular values for a practical implementation with a 20x 0.4 objective. We consider here the minimum acceptable value for mu and a number of microlenses for the Fourier light field microscope of 4. Here it is clear that resolution is 10 times worse for the classical light field implementation respect to the native microscope. And we recover by a factor of two this decrease in the Fourier light field setup. On the other hand, depth of field is increasing the light field architecture and further improved in the Fourier light field implementation. Remember also that 3D reconstruction is prevented in the conventional configuration. As a first example, I show you here a typical capture of a Fourier light field microscope in bright field operation. This particular setup was working with n equal to 3, and the sample was a live nematode in a water environment. 
We present here a real-time video of the moving animal. After applying well-established reconstruction algorithms to each single frame, we can simply change the perspective of the 3D sample or perform a digital refocusing. Since the 3D information is captured in a single shot fashion, high fidelity 3D videos can be generated from moving specimens as in this case. Second, I'm presenting the result of using a fluorescent sparse sample, namely diet cotton fibers. Here you can see the sensor response to this sample and the corresponding change in the point of view and the digitally refocused stack from this single picture. More sophisticated algorithms can be applied to that kind of images to generate 3D point clouds and produce a 3D render of the image. For doing this properly, an additional property has to be included, namely optical sectioning. This feature is defined as the capability of rejection of out-of-focus light at each stage of the refocusing process. Here we present the results obtained by, the, by Add the Convolution algorithm that allowed us to generate a quite sharp render of a bundle of these fibers. You can see in the image in the center and uh, in the top right uh, the difference between the reconstruction, the stack refocusing, and um, with and without uh, optical sectioning uh, capabilities. We have proposed also fast and very effective new algorithms to further improve this optical sectioning capability. Here you can see the comparison of one of them with previous proposals, showing the increased quality of the 3D reconstructed objects. Last, I would like to point out that this novel architecture is especially well suited to be combined with any technique using pupil plane masking. An example is face imaging by means of dark field microscopy. This technique allows the visualization of transparent objects, otherwise invisible, by blocking some regions of the aperture stop of the objective. The easiest classical implementation of dark field, in dark field imaging corresponds to a parallel illumination of the sample and a tiny blocking filter at the center of the aperture stop. In the Fourier light field microscope, this blocking can be achieved by removing the contribution to the register image of the central micro lens in the array. After the proper reconstruction, we can obtain now 3D high contrast images of 3D transparent objects. The most widespread implementation of the dark field technique is, however, by using a ringed aperture on the condenser of the microscope, properly matched with the aperture stop of the objective. In this case, dark field images are generated without any further filtering. This same architecture can be combined directly with our Fourier light field architecture to reconstruct 3D face objects. As an example of the combination of dark field and Fourier light field imaging techniques, here we show the result of using a ring illuminator matched with the aperture stop of the native microscope when our plenoptic eyepiece switch the device to the Fourier light field mode. As a sample, we use here a simple set of soap bubbles in water. These bubbles are naturally transparent, but they acquire a high contrast after the dark field illumination, and the plenoptic eyepiece allows now 
a 3D reconstruction of each bubble, allowing their 3D render as shown here. Similar method has been applied to more interesting biological samples, as bleach zebrafish embryos, as shown in this slide. Finally, I would like to let you know that this architecture has been recently implemented in a commercial product built by a spin-off company from our laboratory. They will be really glad to answer all your questions regarding collaborations and tests you may be interested in regarding this technology. So finally, I want to acknowledge the financial support of uh, Ministerio de Ciencia e Innovación of the Spanish government and uh, the uh, Generalitat Valenciana, also the regional, the region government. And um, this is a picture of our uh, research group. Um, and um, for a list of references, please take a walk on our webpage. And um, of course, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. So, arigato gozaimasu.